Hi, welcome to Feminist Friday. Today we're going to talk about third wave feminism. When it happened, if it's still happening, who would involve, what it's accomplished, and why it's important. feminism is a movement that started in the early 1990s. Some scholars believe we are still in the middle of the third wave feminist movement, while some believe that the emergence of digital mediums have created a fourth wave feminist movement within the past decade. History is difficult to decide when you're in the middle of it, so I'm sure someone will clear this all up in the next 10 years or so. The third wave feminist movement is generally associated with individuality and diversity. It was under third wave feminism that the idea of intersectionality began to flourish. Intersectionality is the idea that people could face layers of intersecting oppression. And these intersecting layers of oppression could be based on anything, like race, class, gender, or sexuality. Third wave feminism is also known for its efforts in trying to end gender stereotypes. Notable third wave feminist voices include Bell Hooks, an author whose work focused on the intersections between race, class, and gender. Riot Girl, a punk rock band that had anti-corporate and anti-sexism messages in their music. And Anita Hill, who famously claimed herself as a third wave feminist during an interview that took place after accusing someone of sexual harassment. One challenge faced by third wave feminism was the belief that Western culture no longer needed feminism. The idea behind that is that our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents already solved gender inequality. That because we benefit from the advancements made by first and second wave feminists, that there is no longer any more work to be done. I think at best the idea that feminism is no longer needed is dismissive and rooted in ignorance, and at its worst it's a malicious idea that purposefully and willfully ignores the history of feminism and the state of gender equality in the world. The work that third wave feminists have done has been largely rooted in the civil rights work that was done by second wave feminists. This includes the continued work against sexual violence, ranging from harassment to rape. Continuing the fight for reproductive rights, which has been centered around accessible contraception, abortion, and education, and lessening workplace inequality that has manifested itself in the glass ceiling and the wage gap. Let's take a look at what third wave feminists have accomplished thus far. Third wave feminists have used new mediums to educate and bring awareness to this movement. Technological advancements have been embraced to share knowledge and to educate the public on gender inequality. Third wave feminists have used linguistics to study, to dismantle, and to disrupt the way that we think about ideas and how we approach gendered language. And most importantly, third wave feminism has largely been acknowledged as an intersectional movement that is working to end all forms of oppression. At this point, I usually discuss what we can learn from this. What can we learn from past activists and the history of feminism? History overlaps with itself all of the time. And in a lot of ways, third wave feminism is still happening even if some scholars and activists have moved on. We can still learn and change and grow based on the successes and failures of those around us. The success of third wave feminism is the intersectionality, building an inclusive movement that acknowledges individuality and difference of experience that works to end oppression while acknowledging complex systems of oppression is really hard. And doing it makes us as individuals and the overall movement better. One criticism of third wave feminism is that it isn't a cohesive movement. It isn't the same well organized force with clear political goals that first wave feminism was. But I think the key to creating a cohesive movement is to communicate with each other. We will have difference of opinions, difference of tactics, difference of ideas, because we're fighting a lot of different battles right now. And we can't each be fighting all of them all of the time, but we can show up for each other. We we can listen and come when we're needed and do what we can. One small group of people shouldn't be responsible for organizing every protest, every idea, every educational initiative. But that's one of the reasons that there are a lot of feminists because we can each take on part of the burden and work together. Thank you for joining me for Feminist Fridays and learning about third wave feminism with me. If you want to see more of what I do, you can subscribe, watch another video of mine, or support me on Patreon. And hey, I love you.